Are you an adult with ADHD who's not only overwhelmed by your clutter, but you often feel shame surrounding the clutter in your life? If you can relate to that, make sure you listen to this episode of ADHD Support Talk Radio. I will be talking about that and more. So this is ADHD Support Talk Radio. My name is Tara McGillicuddy, and I am the creator and co-host of ADHD Support Talk Radio. ADHD Support Talk Radio is sponsored by addclasses.com. You can learn more about addclasses.com and sign up for free webinars by going to the website www.addclasses.com. And as I said, my name is Tara McGillicuddy. I am the co-host of ADHD Support Talk Radio and the founder creator of ADHD Support Talk Radio. ADHD Support Talk Radio is the longest running podcast for adults with ADHD. So I'm a woman with ADHD myself. I'm an ADHD coach. I offer lots of ADHD resources. I've been a member of the online ADHD support community for over two decades now. And I help people shift their energy and move forward in their life. You can learn more about me and what I offer by going to taramcgillicuddy.com. So today I'm here to talk to you about clutter and ADHD. About a month ago, I participated in an online summit for ADHD and I offered participants a free Q&A webinar and a lot of the questions I got were about clutter but they weren't just about okay how do you get rid of your clutter how do you move your clutter it was about the shame that so many people have surrounding their clutter and hey I've been there before I still am sometimes I still struggle with clutter. I don't struggle as much with the shame and all the negative emotions surrounding it. And I got to tell you, that's why I think what helped me the most deal with my clutter and begin to, you know, get rid of it, deal with it, whatever it is I meant to do with it, is really tapping in and understanding the emotions surrounding clutter. And clutter is not just about coming up with practical solutions and strategies to move items around. I mean, that's what clutter is. If you look at clutter and the shame around clutter, what we're really upset about, if you really think of it for a very practical matter, is we feel shame and guilt and all these negative emotions around the fact that we have trouble moving items. And that's what our clutter really is. It's the fact that it's still in front of us. We haven't moved these items to a home. We haven't discarded them or whatever else it is. And of course, it's not as simple as that. If it was, people wouldn't be feeling all the shame and the negative emotions. And they wouldn't be stuck with their clutter and have so much trouble moving forward. Clutter is not just a about coming up with practical strategies for decluttering or organizing or whatever else it is, there are a lot of emotions connected to clutter. There's actually some connection between trauma and clutter. So if you have that trauma in your life and you have not moved forward and dealt with it or understood that your clutter may be related to trauma that has not been addressed or healed or whatever the correct term it is, you're going to more than likely create more negative emotions, more trauma around the fact that you still have clutter. And it, let me get, let me tell you, it can be embarrassing. I could get it. It can be, there can be shame associated with it when you have other people in your life that you don't like clutter, don't understand clutter, don't, can't be around it. So I know, you know, it's, it is a practical thing too, but let's try to get past that shame around the clutter. And it's not because you're a bad person. It's not because you're lazy or don't care. A lot of the times it's because that clutter is so uncomfortable for us to deal with. There's emotion and energy around the books, the papers, the, the trash, the boxes, whatever else it is. And I think understanding and connecting with that and 
maybe in a sense giving yourself a break. I don't know if it's giving yourself a break, if that's the right term. But realizing there's probably more, a lot more going on with you and the clutter in your life than you just not caring and not moving things around. So the trauma is a big one. And let's go back to past couple of years. We had a collective trauma around the world with the COVID. I mean, we were on house arrest. We couldn't leave our houses. And a lot of people with ADHD, or not just ADHD, I think just people in general who are like forced to be home all the time, I think people thought, hey, I'm going to be home. I really can't leave my house because I'm under house arrest. I know, well, wasn't house arrest is the correct term, but that's pretty much what it was. I know some people worked in the medical field or worked in supermarkets. Some people were allowed out of the house, but the majority of us, even if, you know, we worked outside of the house, if you worked outside of the house, a lot of, you couldn't go out for other things. So we were forced in our homes to stay in our homes a lot more than most, a lot of us had been. And we had that idea that, okay, because I'm home, now I'm going to declutter my house. Now I'm going to get organized. And what was happening for a lot of people, not just those people with the ADHD or the clutter type issues from before. I think this was like for the average person, for a lot of people, is people, they avoided organizing their clutter multiplied. And part of that is related to the collective trauma, the energy that the world was going through. I mean, myself, you know, I was ordering everything from Amazon because I wasn't supposed to leave my house. I mean, I probably was ordering a lot from Amazon before then. So like I had like boxes, my Amazon boxes were just piling up and I wasn't dealing with them and I was looking at them and not even even thinking, hey, what's going on? Why aren't I dealing with them? I just was going on to other things. But then I started really looking at it and the boxes were like near my doors. And I think a lot of that was because even though I don't watch a lot of news or pay attention, I'm also an empath. Like energetically, the outside world was this energy of trauma and clutter can be protective. It can be a protective layer to us. You know, if you go back to in history, you know, or or you watch movies, you always see these people running in movies and barricading themselves in because they're being chased by a werewolf or whatever else it is. And that comes from something. When we're in fear, we build those layers of protection so the clutter that we've had in our lives you know even if we didn't have a if we may be if you had ADD and you had clutter you probably had it before COVID but a lot of um, COVID the COVID lockdown being stuck home a lot of it we created even more of it and some of it was that it was a more of a protective layer protective wall and a lot of us didn't realize that was going on what we just saw or avoided or you know felt sick to our stomach when we walked by it was our mounds of clutter which multiplied so that's something to really look at um is from a practical point of view disconnecting emotionally and detaching from it and like asking yourself like what's going on what's this about because it just seems so pointless and I know it's easier said than done I'm I still have times where you know I look at the stuff the mountains of clutter that sometimes can be on my kitchen table or boxes or wherever else it is and there's that negative emotion that pit in my stomach but I'm able to clear that out detach from it and realize okay what's going on so and the shame cycle leads to, can lead to avoidance. We get this constant shame avoidance cycle. A lot of times with clutter, it can be related to other things, but for this podcast episode, it's more about the clutter. So the shame, if that's holding you back, I mean, some people can have a little bit of shame and it might motivate them to get the clutter moved. But for a lot of us, we shut down. So if you are someone who is shutting down 
And in that constant shame cycle, when it comes to clutter, do something differently. Maybe it's talking to a mental health professional who understands clutter and ADHD and trauma and hoarding. Hoarding and clutter um, are, can go hand in hand. And I did an episode years ago with Dr. Roberto Olivardier about ADHD, clutter, and hoarding, and the ADHD type hoarding is a bit different than the OCD type hoarding. Um, I will, if you go to ADHD Support Talk Radio and type in clutter, that should come up. That's really one to listen to. But he, he, that's something you know that he specializes in or, or understands is the OCD and ADHD type thing with clutter and hoarding. That's something to really think about. And if you are hiring somebody or having somebody come in to help you with your clutter, please make sure that person understands that there's so much more going on than just coming up with a practical strategy or learning how to do something. One of the questions I got from that free webinar I did for the ADHD Summit was from somebody that was trying to help a a client deal with her clutter and her crest crestons were very judgmental like how do I teach her I try to teach her she just can't learn and it's not just about those practical strategies of setting a timer for 20 minutes and do, dealing with your clutter there's more to that so that's something to really think about when or if you get some outside help in to deal with your clutter, understand your clutter better, and your relationship with your clutter, make sure it's somebody that understands that it's not just about organizing. It's not just about those practical strategies. And there are books out there. There, That's one of the things I've seen books come across um, my Facebook feed, or I can't remember where it was, maybe it was Facebook, about the connection between trauma and clutter. So more people in the mental health or helping professions are understanding that the clutter is not just about your stuff. It's not just about the physical things. I mean, we, a lot of the things that we work on, I, I offer my action groups and people get to choose what they're going to take action on a lot. I'd say me more than half the people usually do some type of decluttering or work on their clutter. And that is helpful to connect and have those times where you're just focusing on dealing with your clutter, decluttering, throwing things away, sorting, whatever it is. That's part of the process. But if you come to a program like that and you're still not moving forward, maybe there's more to that. And I just think, I want to say it's I, I, kind of the shame. Wasted probably isn't the right word because it's ne- emotions are never wasted. Learning experience are never wasted. But if you're in that constant spiral of shame, avoidance, and clutter, it's time to look at it, do something differently, and get out of it. Um, And it's sometimes, you know, it's having less shame around your clutter or being able to breathe and then work on it or understand. And sometimes there was a while where I understood for a long time that my clutter had more to do with just moving stuff around, but I was still avoiding it. Sometimes you you need a while to sit in that energy of, okay, my clutter is related to trauma. My clutter is related to the collective trauma around crazy stuff in the world. My clutter may be related to the trauma that happened to me at seven years old, or maybe there's something else. Maybe it's not trauma. Maybe there's something else, but that's something to really look at when you have more clutter in your life than usual. Did you just have a major stressor in your life? Did something just happen that stressed you out? Maybe it wasn't a bad stress. Maybe it was was like you moved and you were excited about moving, but that's still stressful. That's something to pay attention to. And how do you deal with that stress? How do you deal with the trauma? How do you heal? And, you know, sometimes it's reading a book, sometimes it's working with a mental health professional, or maybe an energy healing professional. But I think it's time for all of us to get past 
these being stuck in that shame, clutter, and avoidance spiral. So my name is Tara McGillicuddy, and I just wanted to talk to you a bit about the clutter and shame spiral because I know so many people relate to it, not just the ones that were asking about it on the webinar. I think if you know 10 people are asking about it, there's probably 100 people that actually relate to it that the other 90 people aren't asking about it. All right, so you can learn more about me and the services that I offer by going to my website, taramcgillicuddy.com. And be sure to stop by ADHDsupporttalk.com where you can search for other episodes. And on YouTube, you can also search there. And make sure if you want to learn more or want to connect more, you can also join our ADHD Support Talk Facebook community. Thank you so much for listening. And I will be back with a new episode soon.